What's up, Pan dudes? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, just bought myself this Fossil Q hybrid smartwatch, and it's called the Crewmaster. The true unboxing. I just got it. It's actually cold from sitting outside. This is the one I picked up because I kind of like that, like, bright, anodized uh, color scheme that they have here. It kind of looks like an Apple TV box. The Fossil Q hybrid watches are interesting because they actually may solve a problem for me that I actually thought the Kronos Smart Disk was gonna solve for me. Um, and in a lot of ways, this Q Hybrid Smart Watch does what this thing does, which is kind of bring uh, some notifications to your wrist. Doesn't bring full Smart Watch, you know, functionality to it, but it kind of brings just the basics and that might be enough. And that's all I really, 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 really want. Uh, but I want some of the basics there, and um, the Kronos, in my case, just wasn't reliable enough and didn't work well enough to catch my attention, and so the notifications that it provided was kind of were kind of silly because I never could figure out what they were, and uh, it also didn't stick to my watch very well. So in the box, you also have this. Now there's something in it. Oh, there's a, like a Q, like a metal Q. I'm not sure what it's for. <laughs> but I'm assuming it's a tool to maybe open up the back to replace the battery would be my, my guess. Here's a quick start guide in various languages. And then it looks like your warranty information. So, and now the booty itself, the Fossil smartwatch. So here it is, you know, a lot of box and fiber dust all over it. So you have to excuse it for not coming out in all its glory. A rubber strap, kind of looks like your typical sports watch rubber strap. Strap. It's really soft. It actually reminds me a lot more of like the Citizen liquid rubber or something like that. It's This feels very high quality, soft, maybe even like a hint of sponginess. So it's going to be really comfortable to wear. But I love how thick it is and that it's rubber-ish, not plastic-ish. There's kind of a very big difference in feel and in comfort. Uh, so when they're, they skew on the rubber side, that helps. It's a little bit of um, accordion uh, waves in there, which is kind of very typical and uh, very nice. I mean, I can tell you it's really nice, even though it's got all this like fiber box dust all over it. You may want to replace the watch band on this watch. And what I can tell you is that it's a 22 millimeter watch band. So any 22 millimeter watch band with spring bar should fit this very very nicely and so you can quickly change up the look of it now the other thing I will show you here is that they have these little this little uh, latch here for detaching the spring bar uh, that comes with the watch and the and the band that comes with the watch very quickly so you can you can install it and uninstall it really quickly I love these quick detached spring bars I wish more watch companies would pro provide them out of the box because they are really really nice especially if you want to quickly change bands on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis um, so the fact that they come there with it is, is really nice but if you're gonna buy some aftermarket watch bands just make sure that they're 22 millimeters and they should fit fine looks like a stainless steel case here and it's pretty wide and I actually like that I know a lot of people don't but especially on sport watches I don't mind them being being big I like my watches big anyway bigger is better right and this might not be super accurate here, but about a 44 millimeters across. Let's take a look at how thick it is. It looks like there's just a slight curve to the crystal. So about 14 and a quarter millimeters thick. So pretty nice ample sized watch. I mean, you know, it's gonna fit right in the realm of your men's sized, you know, larger watches, not super huge. Crystal seems to be nice. I don't know if that's sapphire, but I kind of think it might not be, but it seems like a nice crystal. And it, it absolutely might be. Or a Gorilla Glass. Polished case. That all looks like pretty standard watch stuff. Uh, the buttons here are actually, and I think in this one in particular, is kind of your uh, function and information selector because there's not a chronograph feature, which is what you would normally assume. And then you've got a crown here, and all of the, these uh, pieces here are kind of a brushed finish, which is nice, little crown protectors there. We'll check out more of the crown a little later. And as expected, this might be 
a tool to open the back here for the battery. As you can see, there's a little groove in there. It looks like you could use a quarter, but this is kind of nice and big, and this is a pretty sizable piece of metal, and it's polished and a little bit curved on the edges, so you don't have to worry, I think, about busting up, uh, scratching up the back of your watch. And I'm just going to try to open it here. Looks like I got a quarter turn out of it. Putting a back of the watch, there it goes, that is kind of use, easily user serviceable, is that the expectation is that the battery in the watch itself may die, you know, especially with smartwatch features. It's Renata uh, CR2430, so kind of your typical watch battery fits in there, and seems like, oops, and it's 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 actually a pretty nice feature, especially you know on quartz watches you may have to change the battery every year. On a smart watch like this, where it, you know the hands are going to move even more so, and you're kind of driving a little computer and a Bluetooth receiver and all of that, um, you actually might. Okay, so it kind of pops in there, and then it looks like not even a quarter turn, like an eighth of a turn to tighten it down and to loosen it up. Uh, you know, you're going to need more power. And since this, there's nothing about this that's, you know, rechargeable, you do want to be able to access that battery. And so that's a pretty nice little feature. Stainless steel. I still have the plastic on there. You can see that the bottom is a has a little bit of kind of a, a convex shape too. So it should be really nice and comfortable to wear. Like I said, the, the, it does come in a variety of designs. I mean, it's effectively, they all have the same type of, of design where you have the, the dial and the sub-dial, and that's where the information is basically going to be presented to you, kind of using a combination of both hands. And once I get into the, the more detailed review and use it a little bit, I'll explain the functionality there. But uh, you can get this Q-Hybrid in a bunch of different color combinations. This one is probably the most bold and brash, but they do have them in kind of a more traditional stainless steel and diver style. So if you wanted to wear this to work, you know, with the metal bracelet and you wanted to, no one to know anything about it, that those would be the models to pick. This one I just got because I dug the colors. It kind of looks like a yachting watch or something in a nice sporty rubber band, which maybe I might switch to a leather or a bracelet uh, eventually, but right now I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It is, it is really comfortable. I've got a fairly large wrist, you know, so I wear a seven uh, to seven and a half inch uh, band uh, on mine generally, and it fits like a glove. I mean, it looks good. It's not subtle. These colors are pretty bold. I actually could wear this, I think, to work or in a professional environment, and it wouldn't scream like a a flashy blingy watch now especially if i put like a black leather band on it something that doesn't kind of strike you as being sporty it would help bridge that gap but there are a lot of rolexes and i'm not saying this is a rolex it's a it's a fossil looks like a unidirectional bezel here that have you know ceramic and and uh colored bezels you know the blue is really popular the the black ones, green, I mean, there's a lot of watches with color on the bezels, and, and this one is no more obnoxious than any of those. I mean, it's bright, <laughs> the red and the yellow, and it's really cool. It's a really super cool finish. Uh, you know, I've had fossils. I want to say the very first real watch I ever bought was a fossil. I've had a I've had a, a really good relationship with fossil watches over my life. They're, you get a lot of value for money, and at $175, to think that you're getting kind of a solid fossil watch that should last a while and that has smart watch technology in it is pretty impressive. If you look at the dial, you can see that the hour markers are silver with a little loom, it looks like even. Apply to the dial, the hands are wide and bright, which is going to help... Uh, determine where they are especially when you're using the smartwatch functionality because those are going to move and then the sub dial is kind of the the heavy lifting portion of the watch in that um the 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 little gas meter here is really showing you your step goal so it works like some fitness trackers theoretically but then also on the bottom here time to alert alarm 24 hour and date you know those are functions that you will have but that alert uh indicator right there kind of on the seven o'clock position on the sub dial uh, is what's going to kind of alert you that you're getting a notification so what generally will happen is 
uh, if you're if you've paired this to your phone and you're getting an alert this uh, sub hand here and sub dial is going to point to alert and then these hands will point to a position on the watch face that corresponds to um, an app or a contact of your choosing so for me if my lady's calling and I pick noon you know theoretically this should go to alert and then show noon if it's a phone call um, from you know my parents I might choose the three o'clock if it's a text message you might choose nine I mean whatever it might be you know those are gonna have to be something that you pick on your own that you'll be able to recognize but the difference is here is that uh, with the Kronos is that it uses vibration and light flashes to tell you what those alerts are and my problem was when I by the time I looked down I didn't register what the vibration was and I didn't and the lights were already done flashing so I didn't know what alert it was alerting me to this is kind of nice because it changes the dial of the watch so I have a visual cue that I can look at theoretically even a few seconds after the alert comes in and not right at that moment and figure out what it was. But secondly, it's all integrated into one nice seamless package. And my assumption is it has vibration and all that too, but now I'm gonna go ahead and pair this to my phone and use it and we'll see how it works. Peter Van Panda out.